In this video, we're going to look at finite probability spaces. All right, there's really uh, two types of finite probability spaces we're going to look at. The first one will be finite equiprobable spaces, and the second one will just be general finite probability spaces. So for the equiprobable spaces, uh, we start with our sample space S, and that sample space will have a finite number of elements we'll say that that number of elements is equal to little n or lowercase n. Now each element is equally probable in this probability space and we know that if you have got n elements they all have the same probability then the probability of each element is going to be 1 over n, 1 over however many we have. But if we have a an event A which has r elements in it then the probability of that event will just be equal to n a over n s or r over n, the number of elements in, in the event A divided by the total number of elements in our sample space. So let's look at an example, real simple example, <clears throat> and this is one everyone's probably very familiar with, well, but we roll a die one time. Now let's suppose that the event A is our even numbers, B is the odd numbers, and C are the prime numbers. Let's find the probability of A probability of B, probability of C, probability of A union C, and probability of A intersect C. All right, we always want to start out with finding the sample space, or at least coming up with a sample space at some point. So in this case, we know that we're rolling a die, and there's six outcomes, one through six, and those, if it's a fair die, those, those six um, outcomes are equally probable. So we know that we've got a finite sample space and the elements are all equally probable. So now what we've got to do is figure out the, the events. The events are A's are even numbers, 2, 4, 6. B are the prime numbers, one, uh, sorry, the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5. And C are the prime numbers, 2, 3, 5. <clears throat> now so I'll go, let's go ahead and also find the sets A union C and A intersect C. A union C is just 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the intersect between A and C is just the element 2. All right, so when we find the probability of each of those events, we just find the number of elements in the event divided by the number of elements in the sample space. So for A, we see that there's three elements in A, and there's six elements in our sample space, so the probability is just 3 over 6, which is 1 half. The probability of B is just 3, again, 3 over 6, there's 3 in that one, so it's a half also. Same for C, there's 3 elements in that set, so there's the probability is 3 over 6, or 1 half. Now in the A union C, we found that there are 5 elements, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, so its probability is 5, 6, and finally, there's only one element in A intersect C, so its probability is 1 over 6. Now let's look at just finite probability spaces in general. Um, again, S, our sample space, is finite, and we'll say it has the elements A1 through AN. So it's got a finite number of elements. The elements in this sample space, though, may not be equally likely. And so we don't know, you know, starting off what the probability is <clears throat> of each of those elements. We have to figure that out somehow, and usually by what's given in the problem or the situation. Now, in this case, uh, we assign probabilities to each element. So the probability of A1, we'll just say is some number P1, and the probability of A2 is P2, and so on. So we've got, for general A sub I, we've got the probability p sub i. Now <clears throat> each of those probabilities has to be greater than zero and we also have this probability we haven't really talked about before but the prob sum of all of those probabilities because each of those elements of course are disjoint from the others or mutually exclusive we sum them all up we have to get one and so that's a good check to see if you've done the problem correctly or worked things out correctly is sum them all up and see if you get one. Uh, that's just one check to make sure things are going right. The 
Once we've got those, we can put them in a table. We can write the outcome, A1, A2, and so on at the top, and the probability for each of those underneath, P1, P2, and so on. We call this the probability distribution. And what we mean by that is, of course, it's probabilities, but we're distributing the probability, the total probability, I guess it would be one, we're distribu distributing that among all of our outcomes. And so we call that the probability distribution. Now there's other names that we'll see later that we can use for, for that, but uh, for these discrete, you know, finite probability spaces, we just call it probability distribution. All right, so let's look at an example. The example is we're going to roll a die two times, and then we're going to add the results. So we roll it once, see what it is, roll it again, see what that one is, and we add them together, and our outcome then is the addition of those two. So we know that our we roll our two die, we know that we'll get at least one on each of them, and if we add them together we would get two, and so the lowest outcome that we can get is two. Now I'm going to write a table, I wrote a table over here that shows each roll, roll one and roll two, and we know that if we, in general, if we have two rolls, we know that the probability for each of those individual ones, let's say one, if we roll a one and then we roll another run, oops, sorry, I got the one, first one up here, roll one, roll another one, that that probability is the same as rolling first a one and then, uh, sorry, first a two and then a one. That has the same probability as rolling a one and a one. Or that has the same probability of rolling a one and then a two. So each of those individual rolls has the same probability. So all those are equally probable. However, our, our result for our experiment, which is to add the two, are not equally probable. And why is that? Well, if we write the table like this, we've got roll one and roll two. In the boxes, I've written the addition of those two. So if we look at roll one and roll one, the result would be a two. Or if we rolled a 2 first and then a 1, the result would be a 3. Or if we rolled a 1 first and then a 2, we would get a 3, and so on. So I just added up those rows and columns and to get the elements inside here. So if you look at, let's look at the first row, we just get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. Those would be the outcomes if we rolled a 1 first and then a, a 1, a 2 first and then a 1, and so on. All right, now if you look at these, we need to find the probability of each of these outcomes. These outcomes over here, this is the sample space. We have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, through 12. So 12 is the highest number we can get. 2 is the lowest number we can get. Now if we roll a 2, what's the probability of rolling a 2? Well, there's only one possibility of the two rolls that will give us the 2. That's rolling a 1 followed by a 1. So that probability would be 1 divided by 36, 36 being the total number that we have in our table here. Now if we roll, if we want to know what the probability of finding a 3 is, or rolling a 3, meaning a, we, the, the addition of the two outcomes is 3, <clears throat> we could either have a 2 first followed by a 1, or a 1 first followed by a 2. So there's only two possibilities. Notice on this diagonal we have th two 3's. So the probability of getting a 3, then, is 2 divided by 36. Now let's look at for 4s. Four 4s, we've got on this diagonal here are the only 4s, and there's 3 of them. And so the probability of getting a 4, then, is 3, 36. All right, so you can see where this is going. There's 1, 2, 2, 3s, 3, 4s, 4, 5s, five sixes and so on. <clears throat> but eventually it starts going down again. It's, for sevens we've got six sevens, but then when we get to the eights we've only got five of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five eights. So only five eights. And then finally when we get down to twelve, there's only one twelve. So I wrote the, the probability distribution down here at the bottom. The outcomes across the top, two, three, through twelve. 
and then probability underneath of them. So we've got 136, 236, 336, and so on. Notice that 7, we got 636, then it starts going down again. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 36. Now if you <clears throat> add up all of these values here and summed up all of those probabilities, you will find that we get 1. And so we know that at least we've got the, the, right, distri the right values to dis distribute in here. And um, it makes sense the way that we've done this. So you need to do a little bit of checking when you're done to make sure that, that at least um, they haven't made some you know, great errors in, in finding that probability distribution.